Juni Tyson the Zodiac War is okay. It's fine. It's basically anime popcorn. It isn't especially groundbreaking, but it isn't terrible. It's an enjoyable time from minute one with a couple of places where it noticeably drags. But be that as it may, Juni Tyson is quite interesting when it comes to the genre it belongs to, that of the Battle Royale. For those of you who don't know, the Battle Royale genre refers to stories or games which consists of taking a group of individuals and dropping them off in a location and then having them fight to the death. Examples of this, the most famous in recent memory being the PUBG Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, where 100 people are dropped onto a map and basically have to kill each other till one remains, or other not quite as famous, but still very well-known examples such as the Fate series or the Hunger Games. And, of course, the codifier and namer of this genre, the live-action film Battle Royale, which, if you go and watch it, you can see the influence it has on all of these quite plainly. But be that as that may, Judy Tyson does something interesting with the genre that I have never seen before. That thing being the fact that there is no protagonist. In almost every single Battle Royale type show I've ever seen, it is always within the first few episodes plainly clear who the winner, or at the very least, who one of the survivors is. It's always going to be the protagonist. It's the anime spends all this time building up this character, showing us their past, showing us their hopes, their dreams for the future, that they're not just going to throw away all of that time, effort, and resources in order to do a plot twist or so. It's just something that doesn't happen in anime. But the thing about this anime is that it doesn't adhere to that rule. Um, minor spoilers for the first episode, but the first episode we're introduced to the Warrior of the Boar. As we learn early on in the series, there are 12 families each representing one of the animals of the Zodiac, and each one of them brings forth a warrior, all of which are equipped with a single supernatural ability. In the first episode, we are introduced to Boar, who has the ability of non-reload, the ability to shoot guns endlessly without ever needing to reload. We are introduced to her her abilities, and we are told a bit about her past, how she is part of a family, the head of which, her father, won the previous Juni Tyson, and she has a sister, both of which are being trained. And then we learn that when her sister gets picked over her to be the representative of their family, she kind of sort of loses her shit and then manipulates her sister until she basically goes crazy and kills herself. And at this point, we assume that this is our protagonist. Either the show is going for a character who is either the biggest piece of shit out of all of them, or who is the least horrible human being, and we are expecting to see that all of these other warriors are equally, if not worse, monsters than her. And then the episode continues on with some rather good choreography, there's some good action scenes. There's a fight between her and the warrior of the rabbit, Usagi. Can I just say, Usagi, the warrior of the rabbit, has, like, the best character design. I mean, he's just... He's basically wearing a little thong, a giant rabbit, like, puffy cotton ball rabbit tail, and high heels. It's just, he's just so striking, but that's besides the point. We get into a fight between her and Rabbit, and we get to see her tactical mindset. We see she has a plan to deal with him, like he's very fast, very melee oriented, so she plans on pretending to run out of bullets, so she so Usagi, the warrior of the Rabbit, will run up towards him, toward, towards her, and then she'll just unload an entire clip into him, considering the fact that her superpower is basically not running out of bullets. But then, a corpse of a previous character, Dragon, who died on uh, off screen, just suddenly grabs her, and Usagi murks her real fucking hard, and she gets killed 
in the first episode. This is, like, it blew my mind when I saw this because, you know, this just doesn't happen. Because not only did they go into her backstory and everything, but it's also because anime is very expensive to make. So it's like, they built up this character, they showed her her past, or they showed us, I should say, her past, and then they just killed her off. And it's just like, whoa, okay, we, what is this? Is this going to be a Game of Thrones situation? Is nobody safe? And you're fucking right, nobody is safe. It immediately, the show in the first few episodes, you know, makes a point of going, yeah, you think this character's going to be the protagonist? No, they're not. They're going to die right here. And that's one of the things that I've never seen in a Battle Royale anime. There's always a character who we have so much emphasis on that it becomes readily apparent that they are the protagonist. They have the plot armor. They are not the one who is going to die. But Juni Tyson does not adhere to this. It decides the character... It's like, it's almost a monster of the week situation, except... We learn a bit of backstory from this character and then they die. It's a very rather interesting setup that I've never seen before. Of course, this of course it the show seemingly knows that if the character we're focusing on dies that episode, then we're going to, you know, become desensitized to the fact that the character who that episode is focusing on is the one to die. So as it goes on, this pattern is broken. But still, it's a very fascinating little thing and very shocking when the first time it happens and led to me being rather more invested in this series than I would have been otherwise. That being said, Juni Tyson does have its problems. Towards the middle of the series, the story noticeably drags, focusing more on the past instead of, instead of the battle royale that's happening at the present, and animation quality drops quite a bit, to the point where they start using CGI models in an effort to save money. There is also the fact that certain characters, while there's no true protagonist, there are certain characters that are less developed than others. Their motivations are not quite as interesting as others. Their backstories just don't hold the same, well, interest, for lack of a better word. But they aren't fleshed out to the point as some of the others. The standouts being people like Tiger and Ox, and the worst cases of the lack of fleshing out being the snake and dragon warriors and the warrior of the horse. But be that as it may, it was still an enjoyable time while it lasted. The choreography for the fights is rather... Mm, interesting, if nothing else. It's well fleshed out. It's not the worst I've seen, but it's far from the best. There are certain scenes, such as when they make the sudden cut to using CGI models that I don't believe the action suffers, but it becomes rather jarring when they switch out from scenes of traditional animation of them talking to scenes of 3D models just kind of sort of slapping together. As I said also earlier, in the middle of the series, the show starts to drag a bit when it begins to break the mold of killing the character that is the focus of that particular episode. And while I can see why they did it, I wish that they would instead, I don't know, kill another character or even, you know, show a bit more fighting instead of focusing almost entirely on the background of some characters and in one episode, the background of what's going on in the Juni Tyson itself, as in the administrators and why this tournament is happening. All in all, Juni Tyson is enjoyable. It's a 7 out of 10 anime. If you have nothing better to do and you really want to watch a battle royale, then I can think of worse ways of spending your time. It's not going to win any awards, but while I was watching it week to week, it was incredibly enjoyable. If for nothing else, the fact that I can see a naked albino in a speedo wearing high heels cut the shit out of a girl with a monkey tail, if nothing else.
Oh, God. Okay, right. Did I just... No. Wait, no. Do they ever fight? Oh, God. I... <laughs> oh, God. It's, it hasn't even been, like... It's been T-minus a week since I watched this show, and I'm already forgetting about it, besides the fact that I enjoyed it. Oh, God. What's going on? Anyways... That's been me for the day, Juan John John. If you like my video, like it. If you disliked it, there's a button for that too. Consider subscribing and ringing the bell. And check out the links in my description to my website, which I haven't actually updated in a while, so I should probably get on to that. And also be sure to check out the links to social media and my other channels. Well, my Let's Play channel. Don't bother checking out the link to my vlog channel if I have that up. I'm probably just going to upload my vlogs to one of these channels. But, but that's besides the point. The point being, check out my Let's Plays if you want to see me play video games. Check out the other videos on this channel, including some unboxings I've uploaded recently. And basically, yeah, that's all there is to it. My name has been Juan John John, and y'all have a good day. Goodbye.